But with alternating current, this would not be the case. Using AC to illuminate New York, we needed only one big power plant. This didn't start in a lab. It didn't start with blueprints or patents. It started with a whisper from a mind tuned to frequencies no one else could hear. A man is watching lightning and seeing patterns, watching the earth and seeing power. His name was Nikola Tesla. And what he left behind wasn't just forgotten. It was buried. For decades, the world chose wires, meters, and control. But deep in the static of history, something kept humming. Now, after 80 silent years, that hum is back. And it's not just a sound, it's a signal. Something lost has been rebuilt. Let's dive in. Tesla versus time Nikola Tesla was not misunderstood. He was unacceptable. People saw what he built and still looked away because what he imagined didn't fit in the world they were trying to build. While the industrial age wrapped cities in wires and smoke, Tesla pointed to the sky and said, that's where the power is. He arrived in America with a head full of equations and a belief that energy didn't need chains. But instead of applause, he found doors that only opened when profits followed. His ideas weren't rejected because they were wrong. They were rejected because they were free. Where others saw invention as a product, Tesla saw it as a path, a way to shift humanity into something cleaner, something less dependent. He didn't want to sell energy. He wanted to release it. And that made him dangerous. The world needed his mind, but not his mission. So it gave him just enough spotlight to keep him around, then quietly pushed him aside. Yet he never stopped. He filled notebook after notebook, not for recognition, but because he couldn't help it. He had seen something no one else had. And even if the world turned its back, Tesla kept walking toward it, step by step, idea by idea. The wireless revolution that almost happened in Colorado Springs, far from the crowds and critics, Tesla began testing the unthinkable. He wasn't trying to send signals. He was trying to send power. Not through wires or towers, but through the Earth itself. To him, the planet was not just a place we stood on. It was a conductor, a battery waiting to be tapped. He built strange devices that hummed with energy, towers that arced with lightning. Local townspeople told stories of glowing light bulbs without cords. Static filled the air, metal fences that buzzed when touched. Tesla wasn't performing, he was demonstrating. And then, one night, he lit over 200 lamps from miles away. No wires, no grid, just tuned frequencies and raw knowledge. What he proved was that wireless energy wasn't fiction. It was functioning. It worked. But the applause never came. Because what do you do with power that doesn't require a meter? Who profits from a world where electricity flows freely under your feet? He returned from Colorado not with victory, but with warning signs. Backers grew quiet. Newspapers lost interest. And yet, he kept going. Not because he wanted fame, but because he believed what he had started was too important to stop. Tesla wasn't chasing a miracle. He was chasing a map. And in those high frequencies and magnetic pulses, he thought he'd found a route the rest of the world couldn't, or wouldn't, follow. The tower that vanished. It rose like a monument to the future, strange, silent, and unfinished. On the coast of Long Island, Tesla began building what he believed would be the world's heartbeat. A structure not for decoration, but for distribution. He called it the Wardenclyffe Tower. To outsiders, it looked like an oversized antenna. But Tesla saw it as the centerpiece of a new kind of world. One where power didn't need wires. Where any home, anywhere, could receive energy pulled from the Earth itself, tuned through frequency, and delivered through the air. He had the backing at first, 
wealthy investors, headlines, and interest from across the Atlantic. But curiosity is a fragile thing. And when one powerful man asked, where do we put the meter? The answer killed the dream. There was no meter, no switch to sell, just open transmission. Funding disappeared. Friends backed away. Rumors began to swirl. They said Tesla was mad, dangerous, a dreamer gone too far. But even as support collapsed, he kept building. The tower stood, equipment buzzed, locals whispered about ghost signals and strange vibrations. Then, without warning, it stopped. The project was shut down. The tower was dismantled. Its pieces were sold for scrap. Not because it failed, but because it worked. And that was the problem. A genius forgotten, a legacy buried. After Wardenclyffe, Tesla didn't crash. He faded, not with noise, but with silence. One of the greatest minds of the modern era lived his final years in borrowed hotel rooms, walking the same streets where his inventions once lit up the skyline. Now, no one looked twice. He fed pigeons. He scribbled in journals. He spoke of future machines that could pull energy from the air. Most people laughed. They called him eccentric, fragile, and lost in delusion. But Tesla wasn't broken. He had simply become inconvenient. The world had chosen its direction. Fossil fuels, wires, profits. There was no place in that blueprint for a man who wanted to give power away. When Tesla died in 1943, he left no fortune. Only a room full of strange devices, sketches, and theories. And within hours, government agents arrived. They seized his belongings, locked them away, labeled them as national security risks. Most of what they took has never resurfaced. It's easier to erase a legacy when it threatens the status quo. Yet, even buried under decades of dust and disinterest, Tesla's ideas didn't rot. They waited, not in museums or history books, but in fragments, pages, patents. Pieces of a vision that refused to die because someone, someday, might try to build it again. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The Liberty engine emerges. It didn't come from a high-tech lab or a corporate think tank. It began in a garage, under dim lights and surrounded by scrap. No headlines, no venture capital. Just the soft hum of possibility and a strange-looking machine. Coils scavenged from broken microwaves. Magnets were pried from discarded speakers. A rotor cobbled together with care, but nothing that screamed innovation. It looked ordinary until it was switched on. Then everything changed. There were no sparks, no drama, just light. Steady, quiet, undeniable. Bulbs lit up. Fans spun. Tools powered to life. And none of it made sense, not at first. There were no wires feeding in, no battery packs stashed underneath. Just motion and output, like power, had been coaxed out of thin air. They named it the Liberty Engine. It didn't make the news, it didn't trend, but it started to ripple. Small YouTube channels posted shaky clips, curious voices explaining how it worked. Most shrugged, some laughed, but others, tinkerers, engineers, and dreamers paid attention. Teardown videos followed. Every screw, every circuit exposed. No tricks, no secrets, just raw, simple components in a very specific arrangement. And when replicated with care, it worked again and again. Not everyone could get it right, but those who did saw the same thing. Real power, no grid, no gatekeepers, just resonance, magnetism, and intent echoing a forgotten frequency. Tesla once said the future would speak in vibrations. Maybe we're finally learning how to listen. The science behind the spark. The Liberty engine didn't break the laws of physics. It bent them with precision. At its heart was resonance, not magic, not myth. 
just the simple truth that when two systems are tuned to the same frequency, they connect. Like a singer hitting the exact note that makes glass vibrate, the engine aligned its components until energy began to flow, not through wires, but through space itself. Two coils, perfectly matched, communicated silently. One pulsed energy, the other absorbed it, strengthened it, and passed it on. No sparks, no friction, just clean, invisible transmission. Power moved not through force, but through harmony. The rotors spun at a calibrated speed, producing a waveform that synced perfectly with the receiving field. When it lined up, energy jumped effortlessly, almost instinctively. There was no heat, no hum of struggle, just consistent, usable electricity. The materials used were nothing extraordinary. What mattered was their placement. Every millimeter intentional, every layer fine-tuned. It wasn't luck, it was an obsession. And yet, to some, it didn't make sense. Because it wasn't supposed to work. But maybe, as Tesla once hinted, our understanding of energy is still incomplete. Maybe there are forces we've ignored, not because they don't exist, but because we never listen to them at the right frequency. This is your era. This moment isn't random. It didn't arrive by accident. We're standing at a crossroads where the systems we trusted are cracking under their own weight. Energy shortages, soaring bills, resource wars. Climate alarms are screaming louder each year. Entire cities flicker in and out of power while families make impossible choices to keep the lights on. And then something appears, quiet, unpolished, uninvited. The Liberty engine doesn't ask for permission. It doesn't follow protocol. It just works. And in doing so, it asks a question the world isn't ready to answer. What if we never needed the grid? What if energy weren't something we bought, but something we tuned into? What if control wasn't lost, because it was never anyone's to own? This isn't science fiction. It's science that was ignored. Not because it failed, but because it couldn't be priced. Tesla once warned us, the present may belong to others, but the future was his to build. And now, a century later, that future is knocking again. In garages, in basements, in minds that still believe energy shouldn't be sold, it should be shared. This isn't about going back. It's about finally moving forward. A soft hum, a perfect frequency, a machine made from scraps, lighting up the dark. It's not the end of the story. It's page one of a different book. Because when power becomes free, control doesn't get handed over. It disappears. And that, that's the idea Tesla was really chasing.